SharePoint is a portal-based platform for collaboratively creating and managing documents across numerous users. In this regard, it can be used by enterprises as a content management system. As useful as SharePoint is for organizational collaboration, large organizations may find it limiting for their needs. For such organizations, a SharePoint server farm, which provides a collection of servers working in concert, can provide the needed functionality and the ease of use with which many network administrators may be familiar. However, before creating and deploying your Azure-based SharePoint server farm, it is mission critical to first identify and mitigate any potential security issues. The best and most effective way to understand the relevant threats and necessary security mitigations associated with building and deploying an Azure SharePoint server farm is to first threat model the full environment with Threat Modeler. Out of the box, Threat Modeler comes with a complete Azure component library with Azure specific threats and security requirements pre mapped. For this video, we'll create our threat model based on the Azure recommended architecture for a cloud based SharePoint server farm. We begin our threat model with a blank diagramming canvas. We first include components for our on premises Active Directory forest. Because we're extending to a cloud platform, we'll also include in our on premises network an Azure Data Gateway. And we'll include these components in a collection for the sake of visual clarity. Collections are the default group type in Threat Modeler. To do this, with the component selected, click Group in the Diagramming Toolbar and give the group a meaningful name. We'll connect to the cloud platform through a VPN gateway. Per our recommended architecture, we'll deploy the gateway in a subnet. Our SharePoint server farm will have a web front end that users will reach through a load balancer. The web front end will be deployed from a cluster of virtual machines. And the cluster will be deployed from within an availability set. We can show this on a diagram by including the virtual machines in a container. Containers are a special type of group in Threat Modeler in that they are defined as an architectural component. To do this, with the virtual machine selected, Click Group in the Diagramming Toolbar. In the Component Definition dialog box, start typing the name of the desired component and select it when it appears. Per our recommended architecture, these components will be associated with the Network Security Group, which we can again illustrate with another container. Our server farm needs a distributed cache. Inasmuch as this layer requires the same basic architecture as the web front end, we can save time by simply copying the web front end container and pasting the copy to the canvas. Since this layer does not need a load balancer, we can delete it and rename the container. We next need an application layer, which is, again, similar in architecture to the cache layer. And we need an always on SQL layer, which we can start from a copy of the web front end container. We'll just need to remove one of the virtual machines and add a couple of SQL databases. Of interest is that our recommended architecture calls for an Active Directory domain service layer as part of our SharePoint server farm. Previously, we created a threat model for extending an on-premises Active Directory domain service to the Azure Cloud. We can reuse that work in this wrap model simply by dragging it out of the diagramming toolbar as if it were any other diagramming component and placing it where desired on the canvas. We can now define our Azure virtual network as a container.
With all the architectural components and groups now on the diagramming canvas, the next step is to add the appropriate communication links. This is very easy to do in Threat Modeler. Simply click on a components icon and drag an arrow to another icon. The default protocol is HTTPS. We can change this by right-clicking the link and from the pop-up checkbox list, selecting the desired protocols and deselecting any not wanted. Inasmuch as this is a threat model for a cloud-based platform, we'll use the default protocol for the remaining links. The final step to creating our threat model is to add additional properties to select components as needed. For example, we can add additional component definitions to the web front end virtual machines by selecting the components and clicking the Add button in the Information pane. In the pop-up window, choose Components. In the Dialog field, select Azure Web Apps for these components. In the same way, we'll include a cache component for the cache virtual machines, and we'll include an API app component for the application virtual machines. Finally, we can import the threats from our nested threat model by selecting the components, and in the information pane, checking the Import Threats checkbox. Threat Modeler will now automatically include all the threats from the previously created threat model into this threat model's outputs. And with that, the threat model for our Azure SharePoint server farm is complete. By navigating to the overview page, we can see that Threat Modeler has automatically identified 138 potential threats and 193 mitigating security requirements. By opening any threat group, we can get more information about the threats, including their status and their risks. By clicking on Individual Threat, we can get detailed information on the threat, including any relevant threat intelligence. It took me, a non-security expert, about 30 minutes to create this threat model for an Azure SharePoint server farm in Threat Modeler. If you would like to learn more about threat modeling your Azure deployments, please visit us on the web at www.threatmodeler.com. And while you're there, be sure to schedule a live presentation. And of course, please take a moment to subscribe to the Threat Model YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.